you clicked on this video because you're looking for ways that you can just exude beauty and glow all the way up. And I'm here to tell you that you all you already have everything you need inside, but I'm gonna just show you how to exude that beauty so the whole world can just see how beautiful you are on the inside. So watch the whole video through for some tips on how to glow all the way up. What's up y'all? It's Janae the Bay and I'm back again with another banger. Well, if you're new here, my name is Janae. Janae Nabuski, Janae the Bay, Janae is this, whatever you wanna call me if it's one of those. My channel is all about just glowing up, being the best you that you can be. And I want to be an example for people to watch and, and, you know, be inspiring to other people who may look like me and can find inspiration, motivation, and knowledge. Just from watching my videos, I feel like as Black women, it's important for us to take care of ourselves and to value ourselves and to help ourselves look the best, even though society may not push for people who look like me to feel beautiful. I want to I want to inspire people that look like me to feel beautiful and to create that beauty in themselves and to be their own source of beauty. And just, I wanna help you all do that. And today I'm sharing some tips that I use on an everyday basis that just have helped me to glow up and to feel good about myself and confident and beautiful. And so let's get into it. So today's video, I'm giving you eight areas in your life that you can glow up in. And I'm gonna tell y'all how to glow up in all those areas, all right? So I broke it down into eight sections and I feel like all of these sections are important to your physical appearance. But before we get into the details of your physical appearance and how to glow up, I think it's important that women should use this video as a tool to help them express how beautiful their inside is on their outside. And as superficial as this world is, it still matters. People still care about what you are on the inside. And no matter how beautiful your exterior is, if your interior is ugly, nobody's gonna like it. So these are just some tips that, you know, we can use on our exterior to draw in the crowd that we want, to attract the people that take care of themselves as well as we obviously take care of ourselves. And one of the ways people can tell that you take care of yourselves is how you appear, how you look. And so the A sections that we'll be discussing are body, face and skin, hygiene and smell, hair, makeup, nails, clothes, and friends. I put them in that order because that just made sense to me. Um, I think it goes like on a tier, but it's not that exact order. You can switch some of those, but these were the most important ones to me. So let's get started. I got my notes here. I wrote down like a whole dissertation on this subject because I like talking about it. It's fun. I like to get cute, get made up and stuff. So here we go. When you want to glow up your body, you want to focus on ingesting and drinking enough water and nutrients so that you're not always hungry for food. Cause I felt, I find that when I don't eat enough nutrient dense food, I feel always hungry. But when I have all my nutrients, I'm not as hungry. And it just, I feel more fulfilled and sustained throughout the day, as well as making sure that I drink water and there's always a full bottle of water near me. So it's important to have your body in the best shape. And I understand I said, I started talking about food and water first because that's the major key. Like you don't even have to exercise. I personally enjoy exercising. If you wanna go get some workouts, you don't have any inspiration, I make videos. I'll put the one that's like kind of popping off right now up on the screen for y'all to see. But it's important that you are staying physically fit and drinking and ingesting the proper nutrients. And for me, I love, even if I don't see results on the outside, when I know that I'm trying my best by eating vegetables and fruits and whole foods and drinking water and exercising, doing yoga, taking walks every day, it makes me feel confident to know that, oh, I'm not doing anything that will harm my body. I'm not ingesting anything that will harm my body. And I cut back on liquor. I only drink liquor on special occasions and it's not to get drunk, it's just socially. So pay attention to what you ingest in your body because it'll affect you holistically. That includes alcohol, smoking, whatever. Pay attention to what you're doing. And if you're going to, I know that some people might not agree with this, 
But if you're gonna do one bad thing, at least do something extra that's good to kind of counteract their balances. So like if you're gonna eat, you know, two extra donuts this weekend, go an extra 30, 45 minutes long on your walk or do some extra cardio or have a lower calorie meal. There's always a balance and you can't lean one way or want, like too hard one way or too hard the other way because it always leads to disaster. And if you don't care about your health and your food, you're probably gonna gain a lot of weight, become unhealthy, have a lot of chronic illnesses. Whereas if you care too much about what you're eating and what you're ingesting, it can lead to a lot of mental disabilities. So it's important to mix work with play, especially when it comes to exercising, getting healthier, getting into healthier habits and drinking and eating water. So that's the number one thing, paying attention to your body and glowing up. You wanna make sure you're ingesting the right things and making sure you're getting enough physical activity. It, another thing that helps me if you're on a weight loss or weight gain goal is to take measurements, write them down just so you can see your progress because pictures might not say any or show anything, but when you take your measurements around your waist and then your arms and your legs and different body parts, women carry a lot of water weight and it fluctuates with your moon or your menstrual cycle. So yes, next. This next section is your face and skin. So some of my main tips to help you glow up is what I already mentioned in the, the section before was that drinking water and eating the right foods not only helps your skin to glow, but working out helps your skin to glow because sweating kind of gets your pores cleared out. But make sure you're showering and washing. And when you wash and shower, exfoliate. Exfoliating changed my life. My skin has never felt so soft. And one way to exfoliate is to wax. And me, I recently invested into a waxing machine, at home waxing machine, and I love it because me and shaving don't get along. I don't mind shaving, but I get ingrown hairs. And first of all, it don't even last that long. Waxing lasts way longer. I don't get any ingrown hairs, unless it's like certain spots I'm really prone, but not nearly as much as when I get when I'm shaving. And it exfoliates, so I have baby smooth skin. It feels so good. And another tip for when you get out of the shower, the best way for you to feel super moisturized is to, first of all, always lose lotion, but don't dry off completely before you put on your lotion or your oils or butters, because you need that water to be sealed in and you're putting the lotion in to seal it. But if you seal it in dryness, you're just gonna be dry all day. So make sure that you're a little moist when you get out of the shower. I usually don't even dry off. I just like straight to lotion and be super, and it makes the lotion last longer. It makes it spread so much faster. And I still feel moisturized throughout the whole day. Like you would think it'll be watered now. Get a quality lotion, but um, I'll throw up on the screen what I've been using lately and it's been working really well. Make sure your skin is on fleek by making sure you're ingesting the right types of things and moisture to make sure. Like for me, I, dairy kind of gives me a lot of pimples, but I love cheese. So I'm, I'm willing to, you know, I'm willing to get a pimple here and there. And uh, another thing that gives me really bad pimples is chocolate. So uh, one reason to always pay attention to what you're eating is because your body will tell you what is not working for you and what is. And my body starts to glow when I add lemons and cucumbers into my water. Like my skin looks so supple and soft and glowy. And yeah, that's like a cheap alternative to a facial. I mean, always get a facial if you can. I, that's not my budget right now, so I do my own facials. I do like clay masks at home, and they really like bring all the debris to the surface. And like a couple days after a clay mask, I get a whole bunch of pimples, and then after those pimples leave, it'll be like two or three. After they leave, my skin is like glowy and more even toned. But I also exfoliate, and that helps a lot. If I don't exfoliate, my skin looks all dry, flaky, and scaly. It's nasty. So yeah, that's for the face and skin. So this next section is hygiene and smell and I put this after face and skin because they kind of overlap because my hygiene is incorporated with showering and my skin routine is incorporated with my shower so as soon as I shower I always put on lotion right after as, as well as I like to put good smelling lotion that kind of mixes with my perfume well enough. Some of the ones I use, I kind of trade in between depending on what I need. Eucerin is the best one in my opinion, but it's kind of expensive. But um, I also like to make my own shea butter mixes. That lasts a long time, but sometimes I don't feel like rubbing that in all the time. <laughs> it's a little stiff, it's a little thick, man, it's a little thick. 
but uh, I like to use lotions or I mix it with some oil. There's stuff like this coconut butter stuff I've been using and it's so good. But um, as soon as I put my lotions and my oils on, I spray my skin with my perfume. I love to smell good and I love when other people smell good and I love when people com compliment my smell. It feels good. And I'm a very like, my senses are really strong I smell. I hear, I see, I notice. I'm very observant using all my senses. And one of the senses I very much observe is smell. If you stink, get away from me. If you smell good, come here. <laughs> but um, one way to make sure your perfumes last longer is to put on your oils first so we have something to attach to and then spray your perfume directly on your skin. Spray different place. I like to do my wrists, my chest, my belly, my booty, um, <laughs> and my hair. I like to spray my hair so my hair smells good because I don't wash my hair every day and I be sweating and I wear wigs. But like, anyways, that was team nine. But also another side note, if you didn't already know this, when you see a perfume and it says eau de toilette, eau de toilette, eau de toilette, I don't know how to say it. That means that it is a cheap version. You need to find the eau de perfume. Eau de, eau de perfume. Eau de perfume. Eau de perfume. The perfume version. And that one is the higher end one. That's the one that's supposed to last longer. It's supposed to linger on your clothes even after you wash them. It's, of course, it's more money because it lasts longer. But I love, for my, like, when people's clothes smell like their cologne or perfume, that is the most delectable smells. Like, I just love that. Like, and then when I lay on something, I want it to smell like me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want it to, I want people to know I was in the room because it smells like fine Janae. It smells like delicious, thick Janae, thick booty Janae. <laughs> I hope none of my family is watching this. But anyways, this is help. This is, my family is not my target audience unless it's my sisters, sisters in laws and stuff. What's up, girls? So, but yeah, eau de perfume is better than eau de toilet, even though eau de toilet is cheaper. Yeah, that's a side note for y'all. Next, I have hair. Hair is probably my strong suit because I have blessed fingers. I mean, yeah, my fingers are pretty blessed. I say I have blessed fingers because I can corn roll like a mug. If you show me a style, I guarantee you I can pull the style off. Unless it's like a, a pixie cut or like short hair. Or like, I can't really do men's hair unless they have locks or they want it braided as well. But I can't do like fades and stuff. I can't do pixie cuts. I failed at that at the moment. I'm not really on trying to do better. I just got good at hair because I wanted to do my own hair and nobody ever did my hair the way I wanted it. So I just started to do it myself. And in the beginning, it was terrible. When I first started wigs, when I first started wearing wigs, I fell into the leave out category and my leave out was puffy. It did not look good. That's why I no longer wear leave out because I'm not trying to heat damage my hair. My hair was heat damaged and puffy. So it's like double whammy. You don't win in either of those categories. <laughs> so now I'm going to wigs and I find that wigs are very protective. But in order for them to be protective, you have to make sure that you're taking care of your hair underneath the wigs. Don't be neglecting your hair. You can't just leave your hair in braids for four months and not do it. You can't just not wash it. You can't just not oil it. You can't not just not deep condition it. Like you can't just, like your hair is not gonna grow. It's gonna be the same, I guarantee you, it's gonna be the same length when you take the braids out because all the new growth is there, but the ends then broke off because they dry and crusty, dusty, busted ends so make sure that you are for my 4c girls my kinky girls my curly girlies make sure you're deep conditioning once a week you can stretch it to twice a week and make sure you are protein treatments let me say this again protein treating your hair protein treatment protein treating your hair once a month the structure of hair is made of water protein and some other stuff. So you putting in all this water, good, you got the moisture down, but you gotta keep the structure and the protein down. Last year, I did a lot of hair stuff and I realized I needed to stop touching my hair. So that's what I'm doing all 2021. I am not touching my hair. You will not see my real hair all year until the end of the year when I do a length check 
and you might see in between styles or not in between styles but like in between maintenance when i take my cornrows out and wash my hair and stuff for the meantime it's going to be braided for at least two weeks at a time because i'm not touching my hair and when it comes to glowing up with your hair find a style that's easy for you to do like don't do what everybody else is doing because everybody else is doing it unless you can do it yourself if you don't have that coin find something that's cheap for you like braids are good if it rips out your edges don't do it <laughs> try a wig if you want a wig try a wig try crochet try anything try something that fits your face recently i find that shorter hair fits me better especially if it's curly but if it's long and straight i'm cool but curly long hair does not go with me but i'm trying to you know be more natural looking look more chocolate because i'm obviously a chocolate girl but i don't want to look black i want to look like i love my blackness and wigs are just so easy to me and like they're very versatile i love braids too but i feel like they're not as versatile they're very protective but i prefer crochet crochet styles are very protective for me my hair be growing inches inches and for me one thing that really helped my hair to grow was this wild growth oil oh my gosh like i've never seen like put in a protective style and take it out and be like dang my hair grew two inches yeah with that wild growth oil your hair will be like that and it'll feel good and juicy when you take out a protective style your hair should not be feeling crusty dusty it should feel moisturized and juicy yes next this next section is makeup it used to be one of my like favorite subjects but honestly lately i really I mean, I like to look good, but the makeup, the process of applying makeup is very long, extensive, tedious, annoying. And that's one of the things I would pay somebody to do for me down the road. I will pay somebody to do my makeup down the road. Like when I'm making my big money, so my big dollars, I'm paying somebody because. But one side note, this is like for my girls that like to do the no makeup makeup look. If your eyebrows are threaded or waxed, your face will be on fleek, period, point blank. Fleekity fleek. If your eyebrows are on fleek, face on fleek. Because having clean cut eyebrows makes your whole face look clean and groomed and put together. Even on men, when you notice that men, like even like the Middle Eastern men, when they get their eyebrows done because they have really thick, bushy eyebrows, it makes their face look more groomed and put together and depending on how to do it some say it looks like pretty guys but i think that depends on the shape so if you want to go for like the no makeup makeup look get your eyebrows done and it'll look cute like most days my everyday makeup makeup look is mascara liner a little bit of concealer and filling in my brows plus some lip gloss 10 minutes get you a 10 minute makeup look just so if you're just going out the house for some errands, you can look cute. If you're going out with some friends, but you don't wanna, you know, go all out, but you still wanna look cute, get your 10 minute makeup. If you have a job that you go to every day, and you don't wanna look tired, busted, and crusty when you go to work, get you a 10 minute makeup. Because it's fast, you can still do what you gotta do in the morning or whenever before you go to work, and you still look put together and cute. So yeah, make sure, and makeup does not have to be expensive. Go to the freaking CVS or Walgreens. Don't go to CVS. CVS is not for black people. Um, <laughs> go to Walgreens and get you some Maybelline. Get you the base face. Play around with it a little bit because what really matters is the technique. Go watch some videos, YouTube videos. There are way too many YouTube videos out here for y'all not to be knowing how to do makeup or not knowing how to find a place to do makeup. And as a side note, if you really want to look grown and sexy, put on some matte lipstick. Lip gloss looks cute for every day and stuff, but I think matte lipstick has a more sophisticated essence to it. I know, a sort of je ne sais quoi about it. I don't wear it often. I used to be so not confident in like lipstick because I always thought my lips were too big. Why though? Everybody's like, Jade, you look so cute in your lipstick. Honestly, it usually makes my lips feel dry, but this is a Milani lipstick and matte flirty. It is so old. I don't even know if this sounds anymore, but this feels good. I'm usually a lip gloss girl because I, the only lip gloss I wear is Fenty and Carmex. That's all you need. You don't even need Fenty. I just got it as a gift. It was a splurge that I didn't splurge on. I made somebody else splurge on it for me. So yeah, if you want to go up, Make sure you have your 10 minute makeup, play around in it, see what works for you. Play with eyeliner shapes to change your eyes. See if you can lift, you know, suck that 
that contour up you know i have a couple of videos on how i do my makeup if you're interested in it if you have my type of complexion and you want to see makeup tools and tricks on how to make it look good on your skin complexion you can go check out this video oh, oh, this right here next is nails this is another one of my strong suits well i don't know if it's necessarily a strong suit but i prefer i love doing my nails like they're pretty much always done and when your nails are done you look you look like you're taken care of when somebody sees some busted nails on you they judge you like they it's just a certain caliber like i feel like most luxurious prominent women have groomed short nails and this is kind of a bright color because i let my fiance have a say and he said red and if i was going to go outside of white or pink it would be red so i was like okay fine but i usually do like a neutral like pink or a white everybody loves the classic white especially on my toes white and pink is pretty much the only thing i do red looks weird but for my darker skin that deeper complexion beautiful chocolate lovely dark berry juice ladies you will you're gonna want to look for reds that are warm undertones like uh reds with an orange undertone whereas if you have much lighter complexion you can be black or white i mean there's a lot of black people that are really light skin but if you're a white you have fairer skin lighter skin go for a bluer purpley undertone yes and they'll just look good but honestly white and pink are like light pink baby pink my go to they just look so cute and for me i keep my nails short i wouldn't mind a little length not no like grippers or claws but just a little length i think like medium to short one major hack they saved me hundreds of thousands of dollars is getting my own gel manicure set from Amazon. Literally, that set costs the same amount as one nail shop. Just getting my fingers done, like $60 was how much I used to pay for dip nails or gel nails, which is freaking ridiculous. And I would tip on top of that. Like, it depends on the area you live in, but that was crazy. So I bought my nail set for like $40 on Amazon. Haven't gone back since. I even got the poly form, so when I want to splurge and be cute and wear extra long, you know, acrylics or whatever, I can do them myself anyway. Because I feel like nobody ever did my nails better than I could. It's like my hair. I feel like I'm just gifted with that. And like, you know, if I see something in my head, I'm able to recreate it very easily. If I see it, I can do it. You don't have to tell me how to do it most of the time unless it's like putting together IKEA furniture or something. But I'm good at just like following directions. Like <laughs> I can fill in a lot of the gaps. And this was like the best investment ever because first of all, I change my nails all the time. As soon as that one of them chips, I have to take all of it off and I have to redo it. So they're perfect all the time. And that's very possible and very cheap with this gel set from Amazon. And if you want to go get it, go get it. It's right here, I'll show you the picture. I don't get any money for this. But if you want to see me cash up, I'll put your my cash up in the description box. So, yes, that is about nails. Next, I want to go on to clothes. Number seven is clothes. When you want to glow up your clothes, you got to first think about what aesthetic, what, what style, what kind of wardrobe are you wanting? What do you want in the first place? For me, my desire is to have a more classy, bougie, minimalist style. See, like, I was never flashy. I don't even care about shoes. Heels are cute, but they are, like, they hurt my feet. So, like, I'm trying to find, like, more comfortable, like, heels, maybe, like, wedges. But I want to, I'm more into, like, basics, basics and adding, like, cute details, like, jewelry or a belt or like a cute cardigan, like stuff like that, very minimalist. Like, I don't want any signs. I don't want Gucci, Louis, Fendi, whatever. I just want it to be basic. Like, I have this one tank top. It's a white tank top, it's so cute. But I wear it with like 50 different things. And for me, what I have to do, I haven't done it yet. I plan on filming the process is I'm going to clean out my closet of all the, you know, stuff I outgrew. It's like clothes, a whole bunch of crop tops I don't wear anymore. And not because I'm not confident in crop tops because I still like to wear a little cute in a crop top, but it, especially in Texas, because the weather is beautiful down here. 
but I just, I don't wanna be, I wanna be more conservative with my clothing, especially since I'm getting married here soon. I wanna look grown and sexy and classy, not like a young little college girl about her grown woman business stuff. Like I'm on that this whole year for the rest of my life. And I just wanna look cute, put together. I wanna look well off. Like I wanna look like I have money. I wanna look like I take care of myself, you know? And one of the things I wanna start incorporating is a pencil skirt at knee length because I need a lot more casual and that's like a base thing that you can put on with a blouse and throw on a, a blazer or a cardigan on top of it. And I just think it will look cute. So yeah, when you wanna grow up your wardrobe, you gotta get rid of all the ugly stuff you don't want anymore, the stuff you've outgrown and make sure you find clothes that fit you well and look nice on your body type. Sometimes you don't have to spend a lot of money. You can go to Goodwill. And one tip for a third thing is go to the thrift shops in the more well-off neighborhoods because more well-off people give away better quality things. Uh, if you've never done that before, just do it. A, you can thrift some really good furniture from there. That's what I like to do, even though it's not related. Anyways, the last subject is your friends. Your friends are definitely part of your appearance because they influence your appearance. The five, You are the, the sum of your five closest friends. And if you got five close friends that are dusty, busted, and broke ass people, I guarantee that you are dusty, crusty, and broke as well. So if you don't want to be dusty, crusty, and broke, if you want to be affluent, wealthy, abundant, find friends that are like that. Find friends that are healthy, who have same the similar hobbies to you, who have similar interests, similar values and morals, or the morals that you want in life. And in order to attract those friends, you usually have to encompass those values yourself in order to attract those people. And so I, that's why I encourage you to change your insides first before you change, change your outsides. And yeah, try to only hang around friends that are giving, adding value to their life and you can add value to them. You're learning and teaching. It's a cycle of you teaching and learning each other, giving each other things and being able to grow and develop together into better people. And if your friends are not making you better people, they're not your friends. <laughs> they're leeches. They're sucking your precious life force out of you and you don't want to be like that, guys. And so that is the culmination. That is the end of this video, this glow up video. And I really hope that y'all feel prepared to glow up because I already know you're glowing. If you tapped on this video, you're glowing. Glowing is always wanting to be better. Glowing is always wanting to be knowledgeable, always wanting to find out more, always wanting to expand your awareness and your consciousness. And you're glowing. It's freaking beautiful. And I wanna thank you guys for making it to this part of the video. If you did, I freaking love you. You're the best type of person, the best type of subscriber, the best type of viewer. And comment the word pickle if you made it here. And I'll give you a shout out on the next video. All right, y'all. Peace.